I watched too many fucking chickens die, man, and it got to me. It got a bit too fucking real. You know that you can't help them. You get arrested if you run in. It'd mean the world to one of those chickens. They're no different from my parrot that I used to have. My parrot is my girlfriend's parrot who moved in with me. She is a vegetarian. <laughs> I have to pretend to spit on the floor when I say that word. She was just a goddamn fly swatting vegetarian with fucking leather boots on. <laughs> I think I turned a vegan man. She turned up at one of the vegan festivals. I think we both saw each other. We didn't speak to each other. Yeah, I guess she's vegan now. When we were living together, she tried to get a fridge just so that she could keep eggs. Because I was like, look, there's not going to be any eggs in this fridge. So she bought her own fridge to keep eggs in. Eggs and milk. And I was like, <laughs> shortly after we split up. <laughs> but fuck, man. One of the main reasons that relationship stayed together. And it was good when it started, man. It was good. But like, it got stale a little bit, quite a bit before it ended, uh, in my opinion. We dragged it out a bit, but one of the main reasons is I love that fucking parrot. I bond with it, you know, like how you can bond with animals. Like, you don't have to have any bullshit words to express how you feel to each other. You're just fucking content with each other. I feel like that parrot and me understood each other, man. That parrot used to attack other people, but with me it was like, we're chill. <laughs> you used to just give me a knowing look like yeah this is life and that's okay I think I stayed with her for a bit longer because I love the parrot and you know what? I haven't seen that parrot in a while now but when I looked at those fucking chickens through the gate <laughs> this is why sleep's important it gives you that fucking stability This is what burnout feels like. When I looked at those chickens in those fucking plastic crates, they're very different from pigs, man. Pigs have big eyes. They're mammals. You look at a pig and you're like, yeah, you're pretty close to me. You're not quite monkeys. You're not that fucking similar. And they make noises and they scream and stuff. They don't cluck. They don't have feathers. Like Birds are like little reptiles with feathers, man. But they've got so much fucking personality. Once you start to learn how, like, the way they turn their head to look at you and the way their fucking eyes widen out and they have this curious way of moving about them. I looked at those fucking chickens through the gate and I just saw my parrot in a fucking box. Wait. It was just, a, I didn't cry, man. I didn't cry when I was there. And do you know why I didn't? It's because I'm so fucking socially conditioned. That I'm, I'm still, like, embarrassed to care about a chicken. But if it had been my parrot under attack, if I'd been fucking taking my parrot out, someone had attacked it, and I said I punched the person who tried to attack my parrot, everyone would fucking understand. But we eat chickens, don't we? Fucking millions of them going through that slaughterhouse every month. <laughs> Each one of them's got the personality of my fucking ex girlfriend's parrot. I'm just thinking about those fucking birds in those boxes, man. I wanted to help them. I fucking love that parrot, man. Like. Do you know what's fucked up is like when I was a kid, all I wanted for Christmas this one year was a pineapple and a parrot. Fuck knows what cartoons I'd been watching to get influenced that way. I can already remember them. There's, there's, I don't know where the pineapple came from, but like the pineapple, uh, the parrot was. Uh, there was a show called Harry's Mad about a kid who had a talking African grey parrot, and I was like, I want a fucking macaw, man. I want a macaw, and like I saw that show. The amount of kids probably. Just like with Harry Potter now, every fucking rich kid got an owl for Christmas, didn't they? 
Everyone was breeding owls that year and getting rich. For all the sport kids to pretend they're at Hogwarts. So fucked up. End of January, just like, uh, hi, is, uh, we, we bought an owl for Christmas. Oh, another fucking Hogwarts case. Got bored of your owl too fast, did you? Didn't fucking send letters like the ones the fucking wizards use, you fucking muggle. You fucking muggle with your spoiled fucking Dursley kids. <laughs> But yeah, but yeah, there you go, that's a late night podcast where uh, sometimes I feel hope and when I do I share it with you, but when I don't, when I really like feel the ugliness of humanity, when I see the millions of chickens going for a slaughterhouse, systematically being killed and I and what's more is I watch them from the other side of the fence waiting to die with the fucking putrid smell in my fucking nostrils knowing that I can't help the machine is too big to throw a spanner in the works there's no big off button on the side you just have to go around and switch off an on button on every fucking human that's uh, demanding their supply like, it's not very satisfying unless people make the connection. Like, you can get them to eat a plant-based diet. whoop you fucking do They're doing it out of selfish reasons for their health, but... For them to get it like you, that means a fucking lot. And it's fucking addictive, man. Like, it's so addictive. Like, when you see someone just get it, and they're like, shit. And then, like, a week later, you, like, revisit them, and they're like... <laughs> they got the little fucking V in their symbol on their profile. You give it a few months, they're wearing a vegan t-shirt, they're telling other people about it, and they're like, why don't other people understand? And you're like, yeah, that happens, it's fucking shit, it? <laughs> Next thing you know, they got the memes up on their Facebook, they're losing friends, they don't give a fuck, they develop the tough skin and the attitude. And then eventually they have to learn, like, another level of compassion. They have to become a bit of a human psychologist. They have to lose a little bit of their optimism. Become a realist. They have to lose a bit of their pessimism because who's that helping? I understand why Gary Orofsky just ended up smoking weed every day and he burnt out. He said enlightenment is bittersweet. You realize the truth and it's ugly. <laughs> that's what fucking happens. You go, I really want to learn the truth and you learn it. You're like, oh yeah, that's why I've been avoiding learning it my whole fucking life up until now. I didn't want to know. It's too much, too much too soon. But you'll get there. It's just scary, so you're putting it off. <sighs> Who wants to listen to a week's worth of this? One man crying about chickens. <sighs> I try and keep it light-hearted, but it's, it's the full fucking tapestry of emotions on this podcast, isn't it? From me being uh, light-hearted, childish, fucking deeply depressed <laughs> I don't think you can get depressed with veganism because once you've fully connected with it like there's never this sense of like I mean real depression is like kill me now who cares like I want to live because I know I can make a difference so as long as I've got that hope there's something but um, I desperately don't want to live in a world that's worse off than how I found it the first thing my dad said to me when I was born is like welcome to the big bad world Son, <laughs> welcome to the big bad world, son. The most fucking positive of entrance, is it? <laughs> but I guess he was just a fucking scared... He was just a scared man who just had a kid that maybe was an accident. <laughs> With a woman. <laughs> Trying to figure it out and... And then next thing you know, like three years later, four years later, they're having to explain to me that Santa Claus isn't real because I might have figured it out five years later, I don't know. Having tried to put on a show that everything's going to be okay, but it's the first thing he said to me. Welcome to the big bad world, son. <sighs> yeah, it's painful. Fucking cannibals. You cannibal, meat-hearted, udder-sucking... Pescatarian, welfareish, veggie, fucking, well-intentioned bastards. 
<laughs> Fuck you. You fucking menstruating, ovulation eating, fucking dog food breath bastards. <laughs> but I love you and I'm trying to fucking save you, innit? But we can't come at this from a scared place. We can't approach this from fear. Like, that, to be honest, that's the first time I've really gone there with how fucked up that would be. But we can't, op like, let's, let's think about how good the world would be if we do turn it vegan. Fucking great. Until next time.